I'm just going to ask you, for those that you are watching, a few minutes ago, some of you said that I was starting to cut out. Is it better at the moment? I'm wondering if I need to fiddle with anything officially. Don't be shy, I speak up. Okay. It's not breaking up for me, Nina. It's fine. Excellent. Okay, yeah. that's the difference. So that's the value of Zoom. Um, it's really bizarre. Anyhow, yeah, so the technology for Zoom seems to be superior. And I know that Facebook is, um, every now and then it's dodgy, but it does come back. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for telling me that it's, it's good now. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's do this thing, shall we? It's seven o'clock. Thanks for all of your patience. It's actually been so much fun for me to get started with all of you even earlier, but let's do this officially. So I know some of you know me and I know some of you I don't know. So I'm gonna introduce myself properly. Anyway, it's the top of the hour. My name is Nina, um, Chef Nina. I am a lifelong professional chef and I'm a, a healthy chef. And the reason for that is just my very own, very personal story. But when I um, when I went to professional chef school, I went to the best chef school there was, and um, eating was entertainment, cooking was entertainment. Okay, uh, my reminder to take my vitamins just popped up. Um, hello, Velvet. Welcome. Welcome back. Nice to, I'll say see you. Um, Thank you. Nice to see you. Great. Hello, Helen. Welcome. Uh, you know this part Hi. of the story. <laughs> uh, some of you know this part of the story, but I'll say it for everyone who doesn't. So um, when I started being a professional chef, like everything that I ate and everything that I cooked was all about entertainment. Um, and it was a lot of fun and food was out ages and it was highly entertaining and you know you can't party all the time so at some point at some point I really got the message loud and clear hey Marilyn welcome um, I got the message loud and clear that uh, what I was doing wasn't that healthy for my body and I have actually I had like a whole bunch of health crises all happen at once I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition I had a cancer scare, thank God it didn't actually even turn out to be. Um, but all this kind of all happened at the same time when I was maybe uh, right on the cusp of turning 30. And look, I've been I've been eating anything that I wanted to eat. I I ate, I lived to eat instead of eat to live. And there's that that's a whole different mindset. It's a whole different way of, of being. And uh, I was up to 240 pounds. And I, I don't know if you can tell from here, but I am not a tall person. So 240 pounds on this frame means that I was pretty wide. Definitely not tall, pretty wide and really unhealthy. Um, so I really started looking at what was I eating? And I really didn't like the sound of a lot of the options. Oh, one other health scare was uh, I had to get my gallbladder removed. I didn't. I didn't need to because I changed how I ate. And that was like the first time that I really saw personally, firsthand. Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry. Just have some patience. We'll come back. Um, if y'all could mute your own, uh, your own sisters on Zoom at home, I'd appreciate that. There's a lot of feedback. Please and thank you. Um, Mute. Anyway, so yeah, so what I discovered was the power of plants and uh, what it meant to give up eating meat and how actually naturally when I gave up eating meat, I got to see a whole other side. Thank you all for muting. That's great. I got to see a whole other side of the menu, a whole other side of like what was available to cook, to eat. And uh, there, there were no classes out there. there. There was nobody talking about how to eat healthy. Nobody really knew what eating right meant. Um, we know so much now and we keep evolving and, and we keep learning. And, and I have made it my life's mission. It's now going on 25 years since I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. 
Um, I managed to not get my gallbladder removed. Um, I wound up not actually having cancer. There were, there were a couple of other things. I was a hot mess, you guys. I had migraines all the time, so many different things. And by changing how I eat and by really focusing on how do we get more plants into our day, and um, I was really a holdout even until recently, really only in the last maybe two years, I started taking supplements and I found a company that I just love. And I know many of you that are on this call um, either already take Juice Plus um, or some of you might uh, be your own distributors for it. Um, I see you say that the audio is not great. I, I hope a little pass because it's been it's been okay most of the last hour and a half that we were playing around. So I hope it'll all come back. Thanks for having patience with us. Um, so yeah, and Lisa, uh, Lisa, gosh, I think back of how you and I met. Um, and I love the cooking classes that you and I used to take with uh, Hallelujah Acres, um, which was a great introduction. Gosh, hi everybody, so nice to see you all on here. Um, anyway, so with all of this, it just meant that I discovered that when we eat right, a lot of things change for us. And really the introduction is that this class is part of a series for the month of February. Why February? February is, Chef Troy, do you know what February is? Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. And what else? Anniversary. It's your anniversary. That's awesome. Uh -huh. um, it is also Heart Health Month, right? Um, and February is a real focus on Heart Health Month. It is also a focus on um, really Black History Month and a chance to celebrate. And the thing is, I'm kind of bummed that both of those really important elements are given the shortest month of the whole calendar year. So look, we don't just focus on our Heart Health Month for one month, you do it forever. You do it for the rest of the year. You can take a day off here and there and have a little balance, have a little fun, but you know, your heart has to sustain you and your body for the rest of your life. So this is why I teach these classes. And for the black community, this is the community that has the most opportunity to really make a difference in your health by starting to change how you eat, starting to have some fun with it, not make it scary, I know it's a change, it's a cultural change, it's a socioeconomic change, it's a lot of change. And the keys to the kingdom come in being willing to make a change, being willing to learn how to make some of those changes. So with that said, that's why I do what I do. Um, Oh, the sound quality for some people is poor. Some of you are saying it's fine and others are saying you can't hear anything. Anyhow, um, and if you're still there, uh, I can get you the link afterwards for the replay for your friend Velvet. I so appreciate you inviting her. And Velvet, I'm sorry, and I'm sure it's frustrating. Um, okay, so we're gonna get started. So tonight's dish is Chana masala, which just means curried chickpeas. And of course, I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to add some changes. And uh, I'm wondering if I can uh, log in to my laptop so I can get the recipe, unless one of you wants to kind of call things out to me. One second. Thank you. And this one's fine. Um, can I get your Wi-Fi for this? All right, we are going to get started officially, and I want to be able to read the recipe out to you and tell you what the changes are that I've made. Um, Wi-Fi, if you could do, if you can handle that for me, just put in whatever we need for your Wi-Fi. All right, and we're going to get started. So. Um, what I've done is I've measured out all of the different spices, and I think I have some oil somewhere, some coconut oil, Chef. Thank you. Perfect. And I am, right now, I am using this food truck from my friend, Chef Troy, who 
who uh, has made his home here in Lexington, Virginia, and this is his food truck. It's the Lex Vegas Bistro. And here comes his son. There goes his son. Okay. Hey, Jagger, want to say hi? Just, just say hi. Here we go. So there's a bunch of people watching on the other side. You can't see them right now because my screen isn't set up that way, but check it out. Thank you. All right. So, um, Thank you. I will take that and we'll get the recipe pulled up. And actually, can I ask you to do that? Um, Minimalist Baker is a website and you can say Chana Masala on Minimalist Baker. Do you, do you know where to find a browser on there? It is an iPad. Yeah, okay. Here, let me just get you. So that way I can go back to my group here. Uh, oh, of course, because I have a password on everything. I'm so sorry, folks. Um, here is a browser. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so um, Minimalist Baker is the website, and then you go look for um, Chana Masala or Curry Chickpeas. Now, here's the instant pot. I want to show you how I used it without it being a pressure cooker today. So one of the things that you need to know about the pot, uh, I'll tell you because I don't know that it shows up in here, but the bottom of the Instapot is not perfectly flat. It's a little mounded in the center so that if you're using any oil or any liquid, it kind of runs out to the edges on the bottom of the pot. Um, so it's just, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just something to keep in mind um, so that you know. And uh, it has a lot of different settings, and all we're going to use for today is the saute setting. And turn it on. And I'm going to bump it up to 20 minutes. That's a pretty high period of time. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Um, it's a kind of a high amount of time because I'm just going to be stirring and cooking. Uh, I said stirring. Troy, can I ask you for a, a spoon or a spatula? Thank you. All right, so um, we are going to put in. Now, I usually cook without oil, and I find that Indian food is kind of the last bastion. It's the last place that I know where I find it a little hard, and I, it's not for lack of trying, but I find it a little hard to get the effect that you need from spices because the spices have to cook um, they have to cook in the oil and so then what you get is that the oil transfers all of the flavor that's fabulous thank you so uh, the oil is really what transfers and marries all the flavors together and that's the beautiful thing in Indian food is that you're not tasting one flavor or one spice and then another it's just together. So uh, it's not a lot of oil and feed the recipe and I, I, again I use as little as I can get away with so even if the recipe calls for three tablespoons to me that's a lot given that I really don't use oil anymore that's a lot and uh, I don't use that much. I would tell you that I have, I have one tablespoon in here and I'm gonna first try and make that work. I have to add a little bit more I'll add a little bit more but this is the tip for you, and it works for oil, and it works for sugar. Anytime you see a recipe that calls for sugar or for oil, start low. You can always add more if you really want to. If you're not getting the effect or the flavors that you want, you can go back in and add a little more. But try it first. Um, try it first with less. I always try with less sugar than anything asks for. Um, and I always find that any standard recipe, uh, if I follow it correctly, it's way too sweet. My, my flavors are not, my taste bud is just not oriented into all of that sweetness anymore. So, okay, let's see how the comments are. All right, so I've just, I've turned on the Instapot. Uh, I'm on the saute, and I'm just rolling the oil around so that it coats the bottom. And here it's particularly important because I'm going to put the spices in so that they can cook 
in the oil so that the oil is flavored. Now, I have already measured them out based on everything that we talked about that's in the recipe. I brought my recipe, uh, excuse me, I brought my, my spice tins. I posted some pictures this last week and talked about what all I carry around with me. I think I can tilt that up without losing too many of them. There we go. So this is the one that has my spice blends in it. And the other one are individual spices. And since I got on so early, I just went ahead and portioned everything out. So you can see I've got three different spices in there. You can see the different colors. Um, one of the reasons that I love these spices is that they are all anti-inflammatory. So you can see the smoke here. Um, you can see that the oil is getting nice and hot. So everything is going to sizzle when I put it in. So we can start with, okay, so here we go. The spices, yeah, they're starting to cook and sizzle. That's beautiful. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Can you see that? They're kind of, yeah, they're kind of bubbling away. They stopped bubbling because I took them off the heat, so they're going back on the heat now. Um, I'll let them cook a little bit more and spin them around. And based on what I see, I might choose to add a little more oil uh, because I still have a lot more spices to put in. And I am also cooking double the quantity that the recipe calls for um, because uh, I'm cooking for my friend. It's the least I can do is letting me use his, his mobile kitchen, um, which is lovely. So, Unfortunately, his wife at home does not love curry, so we're going to eat this, but already this smells heavenly. You can see it's steaming away. You can see how it's coating the bottom of the pan. So that is some of the spices, not all of them. I'm going to keep adding because I want to get all these flavors in there. And I'm going to stir once they're all in. And just to tell you, uh, some of the changes that I made to the recipe, for example, I used green peppercorns instead of black peppercorns, partly because I can get them. You could look for them, probably find them in a specialty store. I find them where chefs shop. But what I've loved is the discovery that they're so floral. Uh, they're really, really perfumed. I'm gonna add just a little liquid, because I would rather add liquid than add more oil. That is an option that we always have. You hear that? Okay. So you could add water. Um, I'm not adding water. I'm using some of the liquid that the chickpeas uh, were in. I try to always save that liquid because either I'll use it in cooking or I'll keep it in the fridge for a little while um, and whip it up and use it for aquafaba, uh, which is a whole other class. So uh, if you if you have a question, you want to know what that is, write something in the in the text or in the chat. And uh, if we have time after, we'll go through that. But that really is a class in of its own. It is a way to take the chickpea cooking liquid and whip it up, and you could use it in lieu of egg whites. So it's a way to have vegan meringue. So let me just show you what we're looking at. So there's a little bit of liquid. There's still a big lump of spices there. So we're going to have to get in there with a spoon, stir it around. And for example, if you have a wooden spoon or a spatula at home, that's perfect for this. But the beauty of the Instapot is it doesn't scratch. So even if all you have is um, metal, you're fine. It's not, you're not gonna, it's not like a Teflon coated where you're gonna run the risk of getting some of that toxic plastic into your food and getting get it broken up from the surface where then it starts to leach into your food. So Anyhow, the first thing I do is add the spices that are boiling away. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, now, uh, I am going to cook some chopped, or in my case, sliced, just because I like this, but you can do whatever you like. And if you want to really cheat and have an easy time and go to the supermarket and get some pre-chopped um, pepper and onions, it's fine. I'm not here to judge. I want to make sure that cooking is a joy for you and cooking is easy. And if that means you want to enjoy learning how to use your knife and get, you know, playful with how to make different cuts, 
that could be your jam or for some of you it might just be hey i gotta just go and get it done and get it done quickly and so for you it might be the convenience item of getting onions that have already been sliced or diced for you so let me show you what it looks like and as you can tell i'm just picking it up there handed so the top of the pot is not yet super hot so see all that so now i'm going to let it cook i'm going to stir it around a little bit more just to break up um, some of the onion parts that are stuck together um, you know they're all kind of nested the way an onion is so i'm just separating them so that they get really well coated and that's a way to get the flavor to start marrying with one of the ingredients all right what's going to be next um, next is going to be some liquid items and as i said this was kind of a fun find this was organic hunts tomato but what was fun about it was that i found it at big lots which is crazy um, not the only place where i shop but i'm also not where where i normally go shopping um, i'm not at home in florida so okay there it goes now the other thing that i do i'm going to assume that all of you work hard for your salaries for your wages so when I pour something out, I don't just throw that away. That, I mean, it could, it, it might just be pennies worth, or it might be a quarter worth, but whatever, you pay for it. So why would you throw that away? So either you can take a spatula and scoop that out, or a little water, or in my case, a little liquid. Um, and I'm gonna just uh, run that around in there. And you'll see the, the whole can will come out that much cleaner. All right. So now, again, if I were in my home kitchen, I'd have a rubber spatula and scoop it all out, but that's pretty darn clean at this point. So the tomato product went in. I like a little texture and there's a little more liquid. So this is a diced tomato and I'm borrowing from another culture. This is typically in the Mexican food aisle because it's diced tomatoes and green chilies so you can use this for any number of things but i like when indian food has a little little heat a little bite i don't want to fry my face off i don't want to lose all my taste buds but layers of flavor and layers of heat heat from different sources flavors from different sources super important anytime you're cooking plant-based so here goes like i said i'm borrowing it's indian food i'm going to borrow something from the mexican aisle we're going to add diced tomatoes and green chilies and that came out really cleanly see there's nothing left in there um, so what else do we have left to put in okay now is a good time for the beans now tonight's recipe is a chickpea recipe but i'm making twice the twice the version and it's mine so i just thought i would play around and the whole point with you is if you don't have chickpeas and you don't want to run to the store and go get them because the recipe says chickpeas make them with whatever you have if you have black beans if you have whatever it is i got kidney beans they're both going in here they go now after everything cooks together but this is the time because i do want some heat in there and i'm just going to explain let me just stir it for a second so that it can babysit itself and i'll be free to play with you guys on screen a little more directly so i definitely want to talk to you about these peppers so i'm here in uh in lexington virginia uh, not a place that i know especially well place that I get to know a little bit better because it looks like I might be moving here. Um, but anyway, so today I went off looking for all these ingredients and I went, okay, where is the Indian store? It's got to be an Indian store. There's an Indian store everywhere. Indian, khaki, Indo-Pak, whatever you want to call it, Southeast Asian. Uh, I know exactly where to go back home. And back home to me means Florida and also means New York City. And I, I know where all these things are here. It was an adventure <laughs> to drive through the mountains, through twisty, turny, kind of crazy roads. It was gorgeous, but okay. So I eventually got to the, the run loan Indian store. And one of the really fun things that I got was this called Gigi. I'll show you why. 
but it's referred to as Gigi because it's a product that has two G's, ginger and garlic. And it's really fun. I've only ever seen these separately. And I just learned recently that uh, in Indian kitchens, they refer to a product called Gigi. And now I know why. This is it. So um, that's my garlic and ginger that's going to go in now that all the wet ingredients are in there. And I want some heat. And in your recipe, if you're following along with um, Minimalist Baker recipe that I picked for tonight, she says, as much as I adore her recipes, this is where I part ways with her. She says, keep the seeds, slice these peppers, and mix them in. I gotta tell you, these are not your average pepper. These are Thai uh, or bird chilies. Uh, they're both the same, even though one's red, one's green. The green one uh, gets ripe as it stays on the vine longer, it turns red. So all I've done is I've cut them, I've made a slit in them. Uh, with a knife before y'all came on. I did that just so that I could take all the seeds out because the seeds are screaming hot. I didn't even want to leave the whole pepper in intact with all the seeds in there because if it bursts, this is a dish that I stir a fair amount, if it burst, it'd be way too hot to eat. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna ruin my dinner like that. So anyway, so they're cut open. Two of them are going in. I left the stems on on purpose. I wash everything before I use it. Um, so I leave the stems on because it just makes it that much easier to pull them out and remove them after. So here they go inside. And I'm going to add my Gigi, my ginger and garlic. Now, one of the points that I want to make to you is I'm not really following the recipe so closely. And I know some of you got back to me after you saw the recipe that I posted and were like, whoa, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of steps. There's a lot of ingredients. There's a lot of food. And I said, you know, it's basically um, spices, tomato products, and beans. And that's essentially it. Um, so when you kind of look at it, break it down like that, it becomes much friendlier. The other way to make it much friendlier is simply to say, and let me preface to say, I'm not Indian, I don't pretend to be, this is Indian inspired, and I'm sure Indian families around the world, if they see this, are going to excoriate me for what I'm willing to say, but I want to make this easier for you. And I can tell you that as long as you make that first step of toasting your spices in the oil, which has a name that is called tempering. Tempering is a word that has other connotations also in other applications, but in the kitchen, the Indian kitchen, tempering means cooking your spices in the hot oil before you put everything else in. Um, so as long as you do that, you could technically, especially if you're using an Instant Pot, you could technically just throw it all together. And I'm sure everyone's going, oh. you know, it's like, uh, I also know, so here I'm gonna add the salt, um, I also know that, for example, uh, I had a lovely gal teaching an empanadas class, and I was kind of teasing her, but she made the whole dough from scratch, which was lovely, and that's what I do, but not everyone wants to do that. So I said in the class, I think I lost my friendship with her because I said this, and I said, you know, in a pinch, you really could use uh, a pie dough or you could use a store-bought pastry or, or empanada dough. Yes, of course it's not as good. Of course. Let's be clear about that. It's not the same. But for those of you that say, oh, I don't want to cook, it's too involved, who's got that kind of time? Well, there are shortcuts and there are times and places where it makes perfect sense to use some shortcuts if it means you're going to have a healthy dish as opposed to ordering out from a restaurant, um, which isn't always, you know, it, it's a choice that has some ramifications to it. So you don't always know what they're using. You don't know if they're using a hard, healthy oil. You don't know the quality of the ingredients, whereas when you cook yourself, you know what you're putting into it. All right, so saute is still on. Let's see for how long. I'm gonna keep it going for a little bit longer while we're talking. Because the longer that it cooks, the longer that it all soaks the flavors in, the better it will be. And honestly, I might be perfectly happy uh, putting the pressure cooker on. Uh, you 
use of the pressure cooker function. Let me just think of what other things I have here that I want to talk to you about. Um, okay. So, one of the things that's interesting about Indian food is there's um, there's a whole sect of Indian people who don't believe in eating garlic and onion. Those two foods are energizing. They're enervating to your system. They're agitating. And they are working so hard towards a spiritual level of, of some version of holiness. And I apologize if my description is um, it's not quite accurate. Um, it's an approximation. But I know that there's a whole group of Indian people who will not eat garlic or onions. And so they're going to miss out on the health benefits of it. However, for them, what they use is an Indian product that um, is in my kitchen back in Florida. Uh, it is. It has two names, and it comes in a white little plastic pot. And it's kind of sticky smelling. It's sulfuric smelling which is one of the elements that is in um, onions and its cousin, cousin to onions are, are uh, garlic and shallots. Um, they all have that you know, sulfuric note to them. So this product is called sometimes Hing, H-I-M-G, Hing, that's the short name for it. Uh, and then the other name for it is Asafoetida. I'm gonna try and spell it. A-S-A-F-O-E-T-I-D-A. Woo, okay, it's for my spelling bee days. Um, Asafoetida. The reason why it's really important to talk about that when talking about Indian food is the base of this dish and many Indian food dishes is a base of a protein that's an alternative to animal proteins. So we're talking beans. Remember that old fun little ditty, you know, beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you tune? Well, the point to hing or asafoetida is it is a natural carmative. What does that mean? A carmative is a product that helps break down the gases, basically so you fart less. And given how many beans, and the other word for beans, by the way, is pulse. Uh, you're probably going to see that come up more and more often. Um, I, I am in all of my uh, culinary journals and papers and all that. They're talking about pulses. And pulses basically is what we know of as lentils, legumes, beans, any of those dried beans that all fit the category of pulse. But all of them can be gas producing. And it's the one thing that I hear most often that people are resistant to when they're going plant-based is that they just don't really want to be farting up a whole storm. So there's a reason. So with Indian food, because they rely on beans as the source of their protein uh, and fiber and energy and phenomenal nutrition, it's not that they put up with all the farting and tooting, it's that they found a way around it. And the way around it is using the right spices. So this is this will maybe open up a window for you into the power of how spices can be used. Um, yeah, let me just see if there's any questions because I've been talking a lot. Uh, okay, don't know that I see any. I hope that's accurate and uh, that it's not just that I'm missing. Oops. Uh, so I will say if you have questions and you want to put them in the chat. Or if you want to jump on Facebook and add your questions there, I give you my word that after after the class, I can jump on. Uh, I'm happy to answer absolutely anything that comes up. Uh, I'm going to put the lid on this. This is cooking away nicely. I can still hold it with my bare hands. So I just want to show you how it's boiling away. Right? And now the whole idea is I'll put on the pressure cooker just for a few minutes because that will kind of meld all of the flavors together. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. So one of the things that the recipe calls for, that is what I posted on Facebook about this, and I love about her version of this recipe, and hers is also inspired by Indian food. It's not literally an Indian food recipe, 
But the one ingredient that takes this recipe from good, really good, to like, oh my God, I can't wait to have that again and again and again, is the fact that she adds a little lemon juice to it. Now, like I said, I'm traveling, so I don't have my whole repertoire of just any and every single ingredient and tool with me. So, talking about a convenience product, and I thought this was one worth highlighting. I found this, um, it's a really good quality lemon juice. What you see, it also comes, it exists in a lime juice, and what was really fun, I've always known about lime and lemon, but today I saw this, it almost looks identical, except it says lemon and ginger. It has lemon and ginger juice together. The reason I like this, I wouldn't normally, I would always say just use fresh, and then you can use the zest and the juice. But what I like about this is this one, $2.99. And it's the equivalent of eight, and it's all organic. So eight organic lemons would probably be $6, give or take. Anyway, $2.99 versus $6. And once I open this, I can just I can keep it in the fridge. I don't have to worry about using the lemons up in time before I go bad. Let me just quickly pop some in here um, before this goes on for too much longer. And I see the thumb fell over, so let me put you guys back up to standing. That's the trickiest part, is having the phone poised just right. Okay, I got it. All right, so put the lid back on this Instapot. I'm going to switch. Let me see how I wrangle this. Okay, I don't want to knock anything over. Actually, um, one of the fun things that I was saying that I do to lighten up a dish like this is just make it a little bit healthier, right? So I'd like to add more vegetables. It is a curry chickpea dish. That doesn't mean that there can't be more vegetables in it. And if you're at the supermarket, like I said, these days I'm pleasantly surprised to discover that you can get all sorts of spiralized uh, vegetables turned into noodles. So, of course, there's zoodles, zucchini noodles. But nowadays, today, um, I saw, first of all, you can get beets uh, that are spiralized. You can get butternut squash. You can get even sweet potatoes. Um, a whole number. Uh, and so, I'm not doing that, but I'm going to add some mushrooms. Um, they're, they're pretty thickly cut. They're not part of the recipe. This is me adding more vegetables. and. I would like to hear from some of you of what you think you could add, what vegetables. I have a whole list, but I, I want to hear what some of your ideas would be. How and what would you choose to add into your dish? It could be now when you cook, or it could be at the very end. Sometimes I put it in the bottom of a bowl and then just ladle the really hot uh, food on top of it and let that heat it and cook. Excuse me one second. I saw a great suggestion. Um, Michelle had cauliflower, and I totally recommend that. All right, what I'm doing is I'm switching from, this was on saute, I'm going to switch it now to pressure cook, and to do that first I have to hit cancel to stop the saute, and then we'll hit nice. It's only going to say for three minutes, um, and mm. because it's already hot, that'll happen fairly quickly. With a little right. squeeze of... A little squeeze of what? Tell me, Ellen. Um, oh, a little squeeze of lemon. Yes, absolutely. So we added a little squeeze of lemon to this, and you're right on the money. And that's exactly what makes the difference, what elevates this dish from just like a regular chana dal to something wonderful. If I had a, um, a fresh lemon here, I would also take the zest with a microplane. Um, a microplane would give you, by adding both lemon juice and lemon zest, you're again, you're building layers of flavor upon one another. And that's what makes vegan food, when done right, that's what makes it a lot more exciting. So instead of just having one note, you're going to have multiple notes. And that's why I pick green peppercorns, because they're more floral. And your recipe called for chili powder. What I use instead, and I love to recommend, is if any of you don't know, oh, and I never know how to pronounce this. I think it's Bear Bear. Uh, it's spelled B E R B E R E. I'm not stuttering. I meant that intentionally. B E R B E R E. Bear Bear is 
um, another type of a cayenne pepper that has a lot of other small flavors mixed in with it, so it's very floral. So you could just have the one note of cayenne or of chili, or you could do something like Berbera that covers both of those and has so much more. And that was the point about um, a masala spice blend. So if you were on earlier when I was warming up, we were having some conversations about masala and what masala means is it literally just means blend of spices. And because of that, every household, every restaurant, it's almost like part of a dowry. Everyone has their own, uh, their own blend, their own kind of secret prized. It's not just what the ingredients are, but it's the balance of them. So I have tasted, gosh, I mean, I've probably had 50 different chana masala dishes. Uh, and each time they're similar, but they're all a little different. Um, so, you know, part of it is kind of seeing what your own personal touch is. So, like, for example, if you're going to use a little lemon zest, that's going to make it your own. If you're going to use cardamom, and then, for example, in this, this is, this is my store-bought cheat for today. And I personally love that the Minimalist Baker recipe gives you all of the ingredients to make a version of your own. And that's normally what I would do. So if I were in my kitchen, that's what I would have done. Um, and I would even dry toast them in a pan, no oil, but it'll really bring them alive and they'll bloom. Um, and that's a great way to use them and you can store them when they cool down. Uh, but I like making my own personal masala mix. It's like, I also like making my own chai blend. Um, and it becomes a very personal thing. And so when you share it with someone, you're, you're giving a little bit of yourself. And so that's a nice recipe exchange kind of thing to have going on. Let me just check the time and see how we're doing. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so we have 20 minutes. Um, not that I have to use all of the time. We'll see how we're doing here. Uh, this is gonna cook for just a few more minutes. And then we're gonna vent the pressure. If you've never seen that happen, it's a little, it's, it's a little, I don't want to say scary, but it's just, it's a little intense when you release the pressure from one of these. Um, and once the lid comes off, uh, at the last step, we're going to add, I have pre-chopped a whole bunch of uh, fluffy cilantro leaves. And, you know, one of the things that I'm going to miss from Florida, and while Troy is here, maybe you can tell me if it's possible, one of the things that I love in Florida is that we grow culantro uh, in addition to cilantro. Do you, have you ever see any culantro? I have actually had several nice. farmers will sign you up and grow whatever you want. Excellent. So I don't know if any of you could hear that, but he was saying that he works with farmers and some of them grow culantro, but more to the point, they will grow whatever it is that we as chefs would ask for. So that's really cool. I'm happy to hear that because um, although I do finally love the flavor of cilantro, I never used to. I spent the first 40 years of my life detesting it. And then one day, out of the blue, nothing changed except I just woke up that day and all of a sudden, cilantro was great. Hi. <laughs> um, feel free to come on by if you want. Uh, anyhow, all of a sudden, I fell in love with cilantro. And before that, I couldn't stand it. Uh, so anyway, the key is we add this at the very end add it right in your dish, and at home, I'm actually growing microgreens, microgreen sprouts, cilantro sprouts. So mine might look a little different. They'll be on top, they'll be super like fluffy and little fairy sprouts. Uh, and it's amazing how, how much stronger, how much more nutrition is in the sprouts. Uh, but you know, this is great too. And uh, if you ever need to do any kind of a toxic metal detox, uh, a big part of that protocol is having massive amounts of cilantro. And by massive, I mean, ideally, you would have a cup of cilantro a day. And the best way to do that, I mean, if you're going to have guacamole, you could uh, mix your, blend your avocados with an awful lot of cilantro in it. Or um, you could have it mixed in, blend it into a smoothie or juice it. Uh, mixed in with a green juice or, or any other juice that, that you're making. Those are some really easy ways to get a lot of cilantro into your body when you eat it. Because again, plants are so powerful and they're so healing 
and cilantro is just one of many that have all of these magical properties. Um, okay, let's see if there's any questions. Or if anybody wants to type up, uh, there is a fan going in the background, Jamie, absolutely. Uh, we're running a food truck and it's on right now so that we have electricity and lights. It's just, yeah, it's, it's part of the flavor of this week. Uh, it might be easier when you catch the replay after, or, you know, if there's anything that you missed that you feel like, oh, that was the key. I know that was the, the keys to the kingdom are right there and I missed it. Just send me a little note, um, put it in the comments or tag me or whatever it is. It's, it's all, it's all good. There's so many different ways to reach me. Um, and I will make sure that you get the information that you might have missed. Um, hey, my friend from Richmond, um, looks like I'm going to be spending a little more time up here, Paul. So hopefully we can get to cook together like we talked about not so long ago. Um, I, I really look forward to that. This is a, a high school buddy of mine that I haven't seen. And high school was a little while ago. Um, you can't figure all that out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm so excited. Thank you for saying that it's clear on Facebook Live. That's really wonderful. It seems to come and go. The technology on Zoom always seems great. Um, I heard a little pop. So what that is, is there's, it's not quite done yet. You will tell me. Um, but there's like a turkey thermometer that like pops up when it's when it's ready. So I just heard that uh, that pop. Yes, it's true. We're not that ancient. And I, I honestly, I have a hard time remembering that I'm not 18. I, I still think I'm totally 18 and sometimes act that way. Um, but that's a good thing. <laughs> I, I still have uh, fun and I'm really pretty flexible, both in body, mind and spirit. Um, so yeah, age, age isn't a thing to me. Uh, okay, so just a little more shopping tips. So when I was out and about today, again, I'm using different peppers and they might be a little hot. I used a variety of different peppers. You saw the red and the green, those uh, bird chilies. But I also had some hot spices that I used. And uh, hey, Cynthia. Aww. I, I love that you and Billy got together, um, sent my love to. Um, so glad you guys are watching, thank you. Uh, anyhow, so I never know how hot this dish might be given that those are hotter peppers than I usually use, okay? It's not that I don't know what I'm doing, it's that those are peppers I don't usually use. So what did I get today in the store? Again, I was in a store I don't usually shop at, so it was kind of fun to look at, like, oh, what's in the yogurt aisle and what's in the unflavored, not sweet uh, plant-based yogurts. So I just I just got a little tub of it because I'm thinking it's not going to be that hot. Troy, how, how hot and spicy do you eat since this is part of your dinner too? Um, yeah, six-ish out of ten. Six out of ten, okay, yeah. that's, that's for me six out of five would like kill me, so <laughs> yeah, six out of ten, cool. Um, all right, did y'all just hear that little beep? Now, let me show you what that was. Um, I love this. Oh, but I can't love it. I can't actually show you. Uh, maybe I can turn the camera. Let's see what I can. All right. Yeah. See the front of the Instapot that just says three on it. Cool. So what that is is when I set it up and I put it to pressure cook, I set it for three minutes. But it takes time for the Instapot to come up to temperature. So that's part of the reason why I hated my first Instapot. Because I heard like, oh, you could make food in, you know, in, in 10 minutes. Yeah, you can. But you first need to wait anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes for it to be ready to make food in 10 minutes. And then there's this, like, you got to let off the steam that can take a few minutes. So, like, the first time that I used the Instapot, I was like, oh, I'm going to make rice now. How long does it take you to make rice at home in whatever, whatever method non-Instapot method that you're using. Some of you are using rice cookers, some of you are cooking on the stove. How long? 30 minutes? Okay. Ish. I like the ish. How, how long do some of you need to cook a pot of rice? All right. Um, I'm going to just answer the question. Hopefully you're all answering it on your own, for yourselves and for each other. 
I can make a pot of rice in 20 minutes. Yep, 20 minutes, ding, ding, ding. Um, and that's not just because we're related. Yeah, Liliana, you too, 20 minutes, right. So so for me, the fact that the Instapot needed, uh, you know, it needed easily 20 minutes just to get up to temperature and down from temperature on top of cooking time was like a fail for me. But what I learned is even though you can make rice in Instapot, there are other things that make it totally worth doing. And it's not about rice. And yes, you totally can make rice in Instapot, and it's great. Um, but I wouldn't buy an Instapot just so that, oh, I now I can make rice. Um, there's so many other wonderful ways, and, and I can make rice in the stove. I can make it on the stove top. Um, I can make it in a steamer. Uh, what else? And of course, the ubiquitous um, rice cooker. What's going on, my man? Nothing? You got nothing to add? No? Okay. All right. You're, you're welcome to come and talk, you know. He loves to cook too. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, my friend Chef Troy, oh, we're eating again. Okay, so let me show you again what it's saying. That's the machine is talking. And, right, so L00. So, what that means is it's down, it's cooked its three minutes, and it's now done. Now is when we can release it. I'm going to just flip it a little bit. I've moved some technology. Um, yeah, we might we might be fogging up the windows here. We're going to wonder what's going on. All right, so if there's no technology, OK, here goes. So yeah, oh, you saw me flinch. <laughs> All right, here this. Oh, I moved this away from the light bulb on purpose because the last thing I want to do is like have the pressure blow a light bulb. Um, but that's it. It's, it doesn't take that long. It's just that that first one. Uh, hey, Kimmy and Paul, you are absolutely right. The amount of time it takes to cook rice depends on the kind of rice. Some cook take much, 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 much longer. Okay, that's it. That's the whole like we're coming down in temperature. Now it's safe to open. And using an instant pot to me is so much safer than when I grew up. We had pressure cookers at home, and I, I literally like—I I think I—I I can't say I was frightened of them. Uh, frightened more of the capacity, or of always hearing that they might blow up or blow up in your face or whatever. Maybe the adults just said that because they didn't want us messing around. I don't know. Um, back then, my family was cooking a whole beef tongue. Apologies to all of my vegan friends, um, but you know, before I was vegan, I ate a lot of these other things. But so we used to cook the tongue, and then it, it, it comes to like falling apart and tender because it's in a pressure cooker. Um, I'm not sure what else my parents used it for because my memory, uh, my memory's not that good, and I didn't do drugs to like ruin my memory. Um, Daniel's noticing something. What's going on? Yeah, so that's right. So he is saying, uh huh, chicken soup, conch. Oh, these are great suggestions. Um, he is saying L002 because as the time continues, the L shows you like it's done, and now it's going to tell you how much longer it's going, it's sitting, but it's done, so you can actually technically stop it. Um, and Liliana, I just saw that you said tripe soup. My mother would have loved that. And any time that she mentioned tripe soup, all I could think of was, oh my God, I mean, I can still remember it. Anyway, it, it might be this amazing delicacy, and I'll never know, and I'm okay with that. So, all right, here goes. So the lid just twists off. It does that little musical thing that you might have heard. I'm glad it was delicious. Uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm open to it being delicious for you and for her and for my mom. Uh, okay, here goes. So there's a fair amount of condensation, water, but it's not like, okay, now I'm not even gonna drop on me. I was just gonna say it's not boiling water, it's hot water. I'm a chef, I'm used to this. I'm not, you know, like kids don't do this at all. Um, but just to say it's not boiling water. Uh, okay, so the lid comes off and show you what we made. Let's start it around a little 
that those peppers, let me just show you my two big peppers, thankfully are still intact. And that's why I leave the stem on them. So they're easy to fish out because I do not want to chomp down on this. I don't want any surprises in my dish. And the reason I was talking about yogurt before is if this dish ends up being too spicy hot, yogurt, and again, for me, this is a plant-based yogurt, but nevertheless, it's still yogurt. Yogurt will totally take the heat out of the food. So I'm gonna just put this one pepper aside. I will not be using that again. And um, I didn't bring a pretty dish to make a beautiful photograph with, but I'm gonna use one of the uh, finest china that we have here on the food truck is a to-go container and the uh, add a whole shower of cilantro because now I love it that much and we're going to plate it up and I added mushrooms remember that was my addition I heard some of you say that you would add lemon juice I heard some of you say you would add cauliflower um, basically there's no wrong answer you can add shredded carrots you can and toasted uh, crispy parsnips. You can add anything you want to lighten up, lighten it up, because um, I would prefer not to serve. Um, let me put that in the positive sense. I would prefer to serve the chickpeas as the starch and have some vegetables to lighten it up with, as opposed to chickpeas as a starch with naan and rice, where you have three starches. So let's have some vegetables mixed into that. They're all going to go really, really, really well anyway. They're going to be delicious. Okay. And there's our serving for tonight. And maybe this will end up being an item on the food truck. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, look, I say there's nothing new under the sun, and every nation has their own version. But this, this is like having a chili. Aha! Let's do that. Enjoy this beautiful. Let's fill up a couple of mason jars, which is one of my favorite ways. Oh, Cynthia, I wish you could taste it. And I don't know, maybe did you cook alongside? Uh, that's, that's definitely possible. You might have done that. I should just have made it. Okay, let's have some food. So, you know, I do think that food is a great equalizer amongst all people. And everyone has their own version. Oh, one more hot pepper. Ah. That's not going in the dish, right? but yeah. throw that away, discard, put it in compost, uh, and I am making a little bit of a mess. Sorry, this is the joy of like live. You get to see that everything isn't always picture perfect like it is on camera, like still shots. And try, I've been using up your, your napkins, like they're going out of style. But let's see if we can pretty that up just a little for the camera. Yes. All right. So this could definitely be a nice to go item. And, you know, one week it could be a Tex Mex chili, um, another week it could be an Indian version, but it's basically beans and veggies in a nice, saucy, stewy, warm, nurturing dish for sandwiches. Uh, should we find out? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Here, I got one of your little, let's put a little of everything in there. There's some beans, there's some onions, some mushroom, some red kidney, some, some, some chickpeas. You are a fire guy? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Four. Yeah. Oh boy, these forks just love to be together. They did not want to separate. All right. So. Here comes the taste. Who's gonna who's gonna be bold and taste it first? Okay. Here goes the same thing. Um I wanna oh, hello. I know where everybody went. Oh, because the camera loves Daniel. Look at that. The camera just well, so totally loves Daniel. He is adorable. Absolutely. Um, so I just I wanted to thank you all for one of you because you brought me into your home and thank you to Troy for letting me broadcast from your kitchen. 
anytime. And, and uh, yeah, and I think we'll do some more of that. So, is it hot? Yeah, but is it spicy Mild. hot? Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Spicy. Spicy, okay. Do you, is it too spicy for you? Got some water, you want a little yogurt to calm down the heat? Water, okay. Water. Water. Oh. All right, go get your water. All right, so now I'm gonna find out. Hey, Rebecca, oh my God, I know, I was totally terrified of Alan Fisher from her home too. Somehow I got this really big surfing, but here goes. So tomorrow? There's so many levels of flavor there. Like I'm trying to. Can you say that louder? <laughs> there's so many levels of flavor to this. Right. Like it all kind of, like in, in order to go through my palate. Yeah. That's the magic of it is you have to have layers of flavor. You cannot cook vegan food or plant based without, without layers. multiple layers because otherwise it's totally boring. <laughs> Yeah, Camera yeah. loves you, Danielle. Yay. Anyway, um, I, I love teaching this class with all of you. And uh, Marilyn, the question about the yogurt. So traditionally, in an Indian restaurant, what they would do is you would have a little bowl of yogurt on the side. And you could either eat a spoon. Like when I get sick, it's way too hot. I just, I dive right into that bowl. I take a whole spoon of it and just blah. Um, but the idea is that you would just pour a little bit on over the top of your food to create a little balance. And it's the fat, it's the fat from the yogurt that is what calms down the spices. So drinking water actually doesn't stop. Sorry, Daniel. Um, no, <laughs> but drinking no. water doesn't actually stop the heat from developing. Um, it might dilute it a little bit, but the heat is still there. What stops it from developing is its fat. So, you know, if you have a little buttered bread, like a buttered naan, um, and the bread will also kind of slow down that heat. And uh, again, typically the fat from yogurt. And so just the fact that it's plant-based doesn't mean that it's that there isn't that same fatty, the, the, it's not dairy, but that element of, of fat is still in there. Um, but you could use crème fraîche or something. Yes, absolutely. And interesting. So Troy just mentioned crème fraîche, and I choose not to because I'm looking for the lighter, healthier. But certainly the flavor profile is there for crème fraîche, and it's nice and rich. And the beauty of crème fraîche is that you could actually infuse it. You could put a little lemon zest. You could chop some chives in it. Oh, and then, crème fraîche is amazing. Sure. Yeah, and then Perfect. add it to this. And it would add even more flavors. It would be more deliciousness. Um, and you know, it's just fun to be creative. And so a dish like this allows a lot of room for creativity because you could follow the recipe of spice, spice it. You could follow some of my recommendations. You could ditch all of it and do your own thing. You could turn this Tex-Mex because honestly, the Indian spices lend a certain flavor to it. But if you swap them out, and if that interests any of you, Send me, you know, put something in the comments what you want to hear about, and I'll be happy to write out a little profile combination for you of if you would prefer a Tex Mex version of it or, you know, a little more like a, like a chili. Anyway, I think that was the last question that I saw. So, just a little plug for next week, and then I'm going to let you all go home and eat your dinner or start your crock pot for tomorrow to have this for a family meal tomorrow. Next week, um, I said earlier, I am, gosh, I hate when I when I put myself into, I take myself into a corner with time frame. By tomorrow night, I commit that I will have either one or maybe two recipes for you uh, uh, on the, the Facebook in the Healthy Cooking 101 group. Uh, if you're not yet a member and you want to see the recipe, just send a request to Healthy Cooking 101 or let me know and I'll send you an invite. Um, and the idea is there's going to be two recipes that are both uh, competing versions, a soy bean and a mate bean based version of tempeh and a non-soy alternative. Um, and we will make that together next week or you can sit and watch me. Uh, but it is a one class that I really recommend that if you ever wanted to cook alongside me, I think next week is the need to do it. Um, and it's going to take a few days for that product once you make it to ferment. Um, so it'll take a few days, that'll take us into from Tuesday to Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday. 
and it's fine if it sits and rests and waits for us until the following Tuesday, just a few days later, where we will then make a variety of dishes with the tempeh that each of us made in our own kitchens. So I invite you to come back. I invite you to, to take up the challenge. Um, and I invite you to, to discover why tempeh is really worth knowing about, and especially making your own, because anything that is homemade, anything that you make yourself, is just 10 times better than anything that's store on. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off. Let's see. Yep, I don't see any other questions. Feel free to get in touch. You are so welcome. Um, I love that you were able to join us, and I love being with all of you. And I look forward to seeing many of you again next week. And, you know, bring your friends. Look, it's a free class that doesn't happen that often. And so make sure that you catch them when they're available, because uh, some of my classes I do charge you for. Um, so anyway, thanks for having me in your kitchen with you. Love to everyone. Be safe. Be well. Oh, Ruthie, you know, that's music to my ears. I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you. All right. Be well, everyone. Have a good night. And I'm actually sure I'm going to turn this off.